Hey, what's up guys? Gummy Bay here. Today I'm going to talk about the desert rose. Everything from planting seeds to growing seedlings under grow lights. Um, what kind of potting mix to use whenever you transplant your seedlings into a pot. And uh, flowering and pest control. Here's what the seeds look like. These are from an Amazon seller named CZ Grain. Um, there's no affiliation. This video is not sponsored or anything like that. I just think that these guys, the pictures online show some really pretty flowers. So hopefully um, I'll get some good results from these. When you plant your seeds, you want to use a well-draining soil. So I use like pure sand. Um, and what you'll want to do since you're using sand that will flow out of the bottom easily you want to take like a styrofoam plate and cut a circle that's going to be a bit larger than the hole in the bottom of the pot and then use a toothpick to punch holes in the circle of styrofoam and that'll create like a drain to cover up the hole and that'll keep your sand inside of your pot but also let the water drain out um, and once you put your seeds on top of the soil, you wanna cover the seeds with just a centimeter of dirt. You don't wanna like bury them deep down under the soil because they'll not be able to dry out. And um, I actually rotted like eight of the seeds, of the 10 seeds, my first 10 that I planted because I thought you were supposed to plant them really deep. But um, I was able to rescue a couple of them which you see the seedlings here. Um, I would recommend like a glazed pot or something like this sealed on the outside with some paint or something. Um, this one that I use, this orange clay pot, it's really porous and it grows mold really easily. So there's like, I have to wipe it off like once a week because it's got like white or black mold growing on it. And in fact, the pot is actually like permanently stained from the, the, mold, the black mold so um, what I use to water is like uh, basically just a weed killer sprayer. Um, so it's got like a pump here that you'll like just pump this. And there's a wand here and there's a trigger here that you can just press down on and it sprays out the end and you can just soak these, soak the sand down so that your seedlings can get some water. And then once the, you see water pouring out of the bottom of the pot into your drip tray, then you know that the soil is like, you know, well moistened. Um, so with the seeds, you're gonna wanna keep them moist, like basically water them every morning. Um, however, once they get a little bit thicker and have a bit of a caudex, which is what they call the trunk of the plant, like the thick stalk, um, once they develop that, you want to lessen the frequency of your watering to maybe like a few at once every three days or um, eventually <clears throat> once they get a bit bigger and up through the rest of their life, basically what you want to do is you just want to like soak the soil thoroughly and then don't water them for the rest of the week. So, you know, maybe like once on Sundays or whatever. You just soak all your adenium down all the um, soil in your pots until you see the water draining out. So you know that the entire um, amount of soil is saturated and then you just let it hang out for a week. Um, so here I'll show you the seedlings that I have. So these guys, they've been growing for about a month and a half and you can see that they're starting to get a thicker caudex now. And because of that, they're gonna be able to store water. And since they're able to store water, I'm reduced watering to about once every three days. And once they get a little bit bigger, I'll reduce it further to once a week. So whenever they get to about 90 days old, I'll be putting them in their own pot which they'll stay in that for a while, I guess. Um, they say to repot them once every 
a uh, couple years or so. So um, what you can do though, if you want to make your denim get wider, is you can lift the root a little bit once every two to three months if they're a bit younger. If they're old, the denim, you can lift their uh, the roots once every like six months. Now, the younger they are, the less you wanna lift the root. So if they're like tiny, like really small, then you only wanna lift the root a half inch to an inch every two or three months. Once they get a little bigger, you can lift the root like two inches, um, but that's only for like older adenium and you only want to do that every six months or so. Um, so with the younger ones, you can lift the root more frequently, but you buy a lesser amount. And with the older ones, you can lift the root less frequency, but by le less frequently, but by a greater amount. Here I've got my grow light. This is the Mars Hydro TS2000. And it's really nice. It has a control unit here where you can change the brightness, turn it up, and you can turn it down. Um, I keep it on about 50% because it's a really intense light. Um, it has an on off switch here where you can turn the unit off or on. And it has these RJ11 ports where you can chain more than one light together and control them with one control unit. So the way that works is that your secondary light that's gonna be controlled, you put the RJ11 cable into channel two on the main unit and then run that RJ11 cord into channel one on the secondary unit and then have the power switch on on the secondary unit and then all of the controls can be manipulated on the primary unit and it'll affect all of the units that are chained together so you could have like a third unit chained in the similar fashion um, to the second one and even the third would be controlled by the first unit the primary unit so I think that's a really neat, uh, neat feature. Um, so right here, I've got the seedlings back here. This is the first adenium that I ever got from Lowe's. It was uh, mislabeled as a large Mishima houseplant. And um, I thought it looked really unique. So I Google lensed it and realized that it had been mislabeled and um, noticed that it had really pretty flowers and um, that people did some really amazing bonsai work with them. So uh, I got fascinated and um, I had to rescue him. So what you wanna be careful of is that you don't wanna overwater an adenium. Um, you only wanna water them, the, saturate the soil you know, once a week. If you water them too much, then what'll happen is the, the base of the plant, the caudex, the thick part, it'll get like it'll develop like some discoloration, either yellow or black spots, or you can also tell if you press on it and it's mushy or soft, then you know that you're overwatering and you just need to cut back a little. But I think they're really resilient because whenever I got mine, the first one at Lowe's, they had been overwatering it and the center was like completely rotted out. Here you can see the first adenium that we got from Lowe's. This thing was so rotten out, I had to dig down into this hole here with a screwdriver and I actually killed a lot of it because I was trying to dry it out. It had stalks like this one here, but they were like all around here, but I, the hairdryer like completely fried them and they all fell off. So I have literally dug down into the center of this plant and fried a lot of the stalks or the stems or whatever uh, with a hair dryer and it just keeps growing. So, you know, if you do some damage to your plant, 
do, you know, don't get discouraged or anything like that. You know, just keep trying and uh, it'll be okay. So here, this is uh, my first adenium that I've got to flower. Um, one of the best ways to get these to flower is to use bone meal. Um, and then here I've done some cutting, some trimming. So basically what I've done with this one is that I have pruned to get uh, some more stalks to grow out. So if you want it to be bushy, you want to cut it back so that uh, it'll grow more. So wherever you cut, normally you get about two stalks. They'll come out of that one. But what you can do is, so I pulled the grafting tape off a little early. There's a bud here and a bud here that didn't quite burst open far enough to like create a stalk, a leafy stalk. But basically, if you cut the top and then you cover the top, first you want to treat it with fungicide and then you want to cover the top with grafting tape and tie it off and then let it sit for about 17 to 22 days. And then what will happen is you'll create internal pressure. So water will rush to the cut site and then because the grafting tape is covering the cut and it can't evaporate out, it creates internal pressure. And so what will happen is you'll get more areas around the stalk that will burst open and it'll create like leaves that are still start to form. So you'll notice under the grafting tape after a while that these little raised knots will come up. And then once you start to see like little black dots on the tips of the bulbs or like knots that are coming up out of the stalk, then those black dots you'll, you'll realize are actually like leaves that are starting to form so um, once you see the black dots, you can usually take it off, but you can leave it on a little bit longer to see if you get more spots to burst open. But um, you don't wanna let it go too long because what happens is if the leaf actually starts to form under the grafting tape, you run the risk of whenever you remove the grafting tape, you'll rip the leaf off and then it won't grow properly. So just be careful if you try that method. Um, so I've got other grow lights over here. These are Marithe's Adenium. Uh, this is the GE grow light. Uh, this one actually came with a nice box. This says it's for flowers and fruit. And, um, I really like it, you know, um, it does a good job and it's really cheap, uh, compared to the Mars Hydro. But the only thing that I don't like about it is that you have to have your plants in a line. So if you don't like that layout, then you might want to go with something that's like more rectangular so you can have your plants clustered together. I run my grow lights for 12 hours a day from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. I read online that after 16 hours, you don't really see any added benefit within a 24 hour period. Um, after about three months, your seedlings are going to be ready to be transplanted into a pot. And the mixture that you're going to want to put into your pot of soil is about 30% sand, 10% aquarium gravel. You're going to want to use 30% topsoil. You're going to want to use 20% compost, cow manure, fertilizer. So it's like all organic, all natural. It's not like that synthetic crystal stuff that you could possibly poison your plant with. Um, and then you're gonna wanna use 10% perlite. And mix, what I did was I just mixed all that stuff together in a bucket. And then if you, to help promote flowering, what you can do is you can add a tablespoon or two of this bone meal. And that's really gonna help your plants to develop really pretty flowers early on and uh, repeatedly. So um, some of this bone meal is gonna run out whenever you water it. So maybe every couple of months when the flowering season, like when it's warm out, you're gonna want to replenish the bone meal. And so your flowers are actually gonna start to develop 
whenever the temperature is constantly between 75 and 80 degrees. And you're gonna, um, you don't really have to worry too much about humidity, I don't think, because it's a desert rose and the desert's very arid environment. And it's adapted to um, survive without much rainfall. So that's why it's got that thick, thick uh, base or caudex to be able to store water whenever there's not much rain. With those tips, you should be able to take care of your adidium um, to at least, you know, for it to get bigger and to flower. Um, as far as changing its appearance, um, you can lift the root, as I had said previously. Um, here's an example of where I'd lifted the root. Um, here, you can see that there's a, this level here is where the dirt used to be. And so all I've done is I've literally, literally just pulled the, you want to take the plant out of the soil. You want to rinse off all of the roots and get the dirt to fall out of the roots. And then you want to pull the plant up higher than the soil level by two inches maybe if it's pretty big um, and then less if it's smaller. And then uh, you can start to pack dirt in around the roots. And um, in fact, if you want to, you could even use bits of styrofoam to help spread the roots out and give them shape, which is what I did with my flowering uh, adenium right now. Um, I'll show you that one. Here's my flowering adenium. Um, this one is, it just started flowering about a week ago, and that's about how long these flowers last. So they're starting to turn brown on the tips, and I actually knocked one of them off a second ago. Um, so I think they're ready to fall off. Um, and in fact, after the flowers fall off, that is the perfect time to go ahead and prune your adenium so that you can get it to bush out. That's how you get the bushy top. And uh, unless you want it to be really tall, if you like that, then you know obviously don't cut the stems. But um, if you want it to ha be a bit shorter and have a bushy top, then you're gonna wanna cut the stems um, often and that will cause it to stay a bit shorter and bush out. Um, what you can also do to make it shorter is you can take the tap root, which is like the thick center root, you can actually cut that and then take something, you wanna cover the cut with fungicide, always wanna cover your cuts with fungicide and you always wanna sanitize your blade with hydrogen peroxide. So you cut the tap root and then cover it with the cut with fungicide and then you can cover the, the cut with like a piece of plastic or some styrofoam and then bury it like that. And then it will be a bit shorter and grow outward. So that way you create like what are called um, like radial roots or centipede adenium. It's like where the legs spread out really far. And also, um, if you're gonna go for that approach to help keep the roots spread out, what you can do is you could take styrofoam and put a piece of styrofoam down in the soil and then use toothpicks on either side of each root to help keep them braced basically in position and that way they will grow outward and um, here I've, I didn't want to go too extreme so all I did was whenever I repotted it I just put some bits of styrofoam down in between the roots here and that way it helps to keep them spread out so I'm not trying to be too extreme just yet because I'm not confident with you know how much of a modification I can make to the plants you know I just wanted to get like some really pretty ones at first and then grow some seeds and kind of mess around with experiment with those so anyways um you know just a recap uh with your seeds 
you want to get a well draining soil, spread them along the surface, only cover them about a centimeter, uh, and then you want to keep them damp, so maybe water them once a day in a well draining pot. And then once the seeds start to germinate, then uh, and grow like a thicker, a bit of a codex, then you want to reduce your, uh, reduce the frequency of your watering. So, because they're going to be storing water to about once every three days or so until they get like a decent size. And then you're going to do it once a week. Once they hit three months, then you're going to transplant them into their own pot. And your potting mix is going to be 30% sand, 10% gravel, 30% topsoil, 20% compost, manure, natural fertilizer, and then 10% perlite. And then uh, what you're gonna wanna do is, you're gonna wanna add in a tablespoon or two of bone meal as well, and uh, replenish that bone meal every couple of months during flowering season, like in the summer. And the flowers are gonna form whenever the temperature is consistently between 75 and 80 degrees. To get a thicker caudex, you want to lift the root up out of the soil a little bit um, once every two to three months for a smaller adenium. For very old adenium, you only want to do it like every six months. Now for the young adenium that you're lifting every two to three months, if they're very tiny, you only want to do a half inch to an inch. If they're a bit older, you can do maybe an inch and a half. And then whenever they're a lot older, you can do more, uh, you can do a higher lift, like two inches, maybe even push it a little, do two and a half, but you only want to do it every like six months or so. And then for radial roots, you want to use styrofoam, bits of styrofoam or toothpicks to keep the roots spread out. You want to cut the tap root on the bottom, the thick root on the bottom, cover it with fungicide, and then cover it with some plastic and bury that. To get a bushy top, whenever the flowers fall off, you're gonna wanna cut an inch from the previous split. You're gonna want to use a sanitary blade that's been sanitized with um, hydrogen peroxide. You wanna cover your cut with fungicide, and then you're gonna wanna tie it off with grafting tape. Cover the cut with the grafting tape and wrap it down about half an inch past the cut with the grafting tape, very tight, tie it off. And then um, what that's gonna do is create internal pressure. And then um, you'll see like little bumps start to form up under the grafting tape. And um, you'll don't wanna take that off for 15 to 22 days. And you wanna make sure that you see little uh, black dots on the tip of the bumps because those will be the leaves that are gonna form. And um, that'll help you get a lot of shoots out of one cut. Finally, for pest control, I use neem oil once every two weeks. I spray it on the tops and bottom of the leaf because the bottom of the leaf sometimes has the insect's eggs on it. And so this will cause some chemical burn on the leaf, but the way to avoid that as much as possible is once you spray it, rub the leaves down so you don't have like droplets collecting in um, any area. And that way um, you won't have like a high concentration of the neem oil there. And um, it should help to cut down on any sort of bugs. Um, personally, I've experienced like spider mites, um, which you'll see like little bits of webbing or like uh, little orange guys with the like orange and black uh, kind of like they look like a little bead or something crawling around. And then also the, there are um, like mealy, mealy bugs that are like white furry things that um, sit where there's like new leaf growth or like in between the stalk where the stalk meets the, um, the leaf that's coming out of it uh, or the stem, um, either on the top or the bottom of that joint. Um, you'll find the mealy bug, which you can usually remove with a toothpick, but the neem oil helps to, um, to also remove them as well. 
So thanks guys for watching. I hope it was really helpful. Have a great night.